Evening, folks. It's one of those nights where, you know, I, I've got time to, to make this video, so we're going to. Um, on the farm, um, I like to use these uh, Gallagher wood and T-post 5-inch offsets. These things are universal, so they work on a T-post, they work on a wood post. Believe it or not, you put it with poly wire, it even works on a gate. This is my uh, kind of first prototype that I made years ago, and I've had this gate now for six years. I have it on uh, the next gate too. Um, these are not uh, bull gates. They're just a cheaper preferred gate out of Fleet Farm. And people come on my farm all the time and they're like, wow, your gates haven't rusted out and they're not all bent to crap from your horses. Uh, it's because of this. Now, I actually don't like this style anymore. And if this gate ever does fail me, I will take off the cedar and take off the U-clamps and I will unscrew the Gallagher's and I will do it differently. But this was my first attempt at wiring up a gate, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, and, uh, you know, making it safe so that the animals wouldn't uh, go on it. Um, since this point, I have hots across all my gates, either by handle or by these um, offsets. It works absolutely fantastic. I mean, people ask me all the time, like, why your gates look so nice? Why aren't they bent up? Why haven't your horses wrecked them? How come your, your goats haven't scratched the crap out of them or bent the bars? Um, you know, using bull gates, what, what's your secret? Are you painting them every year? There's no secret, folks. Um, I just put the two things together. This is prototype number two. This is a 12-foot uh, wire, wire mesh gate. Um, you know, it's actually kind of a wimpy little gate. Um, these gates aren't the strongest. Um, this particular one has been up for three years. Never had a problem with it. It works that great. Um, there's about 100 or maybe 120 pound goat kids in here. Um, they fly through this gate all the time. And, uh, you know, they get up to it, they touch it, they get fried, they run back. And that works for me. Every season we put uh, a new set of goat kids in here. Every season they touch this. Every season they get fried and run away from it. As you can see, the thing has been up for three years and the gate is in great shape. Why? because they don't let them climb on it. Um, and it's because of this method. Now, these um, graded ones, these uh, graded prefers, or whatever you want to call these, they just work so nice because you don't have to use the wood like I did in prototype number one, and you don't have to go out and buy the U-bolt um, clamps because um, the Gallagher actually spreads far enough to clamp onto these, and then you just take a um, you know all-weather zip tie and throw it on. They do come with zip ties, by the way, but they're so cheap and cheesy, half the time they break. So I just go get, you know, the extreme weather ones at Menards, and I zip tie them suckers on. And also, by offsetting them the five inches versus just putting a shorter one on, they can't reach the gate to climb on it. It's absolutely fantastic. It also teaches them not to bum rush you when you come through with a pail of food, because you know what? The gate can be hot. Now, this particular gate is on a switch now. So we can kill it when we go in, and that way when we leave, we can't, we don't get hit by it. I've learned how to do that. I'm going to show you that here on prototype number three. So this is actually prototype number three. Well, what's unique about prototype number three is, is I have it on both sides. I learned how to um, wire this up on both sides. I even got a fence alert there on it which is nice, so I know if the kids don't throw the switch, at the end of the night, it'll be like, hey, you guys didn't turn the switch on on the gate. So the little yellow switch there in the upper right, you throw that thing down, the light starts flashing, you can go through the gate. When you want to leave, turn the sucker back on. The goats absolutely respect this gate. This one's two years old. There's not a mark on this gate. Um, nothing has touched it. It works absolutely fantastic. They can see that wire. It's in tele rope. I've had videos on it before. Um, it's not a very strong gate because it's just a wire mesh gate. It's light. I think it's like one and three quarter inch tubing. It's not even the nice big two inch tubing. But again, it holds up really well because these things just go on and they zip tie. It's fantastic, folks. It works so easy. It's it's funny. Um, I just, I love them. So anyways, uh, this year I'm putting in a new uh, swine pen on my place. And I'm going to put one of these gates on the swine. Obviously, I don't need the wire this high because they're swine. Um, but when I do that here, I thought I'd show you my process. But I kind of want to give you an evolution of how I got to this point. So again, I started by just taking some wood, some cedar, taking U-clamps, putting it up to one side of a you know bull gate or a guarded gate, 
And then from there, I went to the lesser gates, and uh, here we are now with a brand new gate. So here it is, nice little wire gate. I think this one is six foot, which is nice. And that's how I attach them. I just spread these things out and I hook them in, kind of like they would on a T-post. The uh, T-post would be in the center and then the two sides of the wings of the T-post, you clamp on it and then you put the zip tie on. I love these things. They're so universal that they'll even work on, on a gate. So right now I'm just kind of trying to figure out the spacing. I think I'm going to put the, the bottom one so it's about maybe four inches up to six inches up. The next one's going to be at 12 inches. The next one's going to be probably 18 to 20 inches. I don't have to run these quite as high as um, the other gates because, you know, they're piggies and they're feeder piggies. So, um, you know, you don't, you don't have to get as crazy with the height. I really want to just stop that snout from trying to get under the gate and lift the gate. Now, also to stop it from lifting the gate, I put the gate in so the top hinge is pointing down. That's holding it and the bottom hinge is pointing up. So obviously that kind of locks it in place from them lifting it. But it'd be nice if they don't wreck my gate. Um, I've had the ability to um, make a couple different hog panels um, at the neighbor's places and stuff, and I've seen what these guys can do to a gate. Um, so um, this is my version of the best gate for animals. I just, I love it. Um, I haven't had a horse. I haven't had a cow. I haven't had a pig, and I haven't had a goat wreck any of my gates ever since doing this. This is um, my daughter, Tabitha, and I um, just sticking regular zip ties on it. These are the extreme weather ones from Menards. I just like them because when you um, zip them down, they, they don't tend to break if it's cold. Um, it's not actually that cold out here. We're starting to get spring. It's, uh, I think, 49 degrees out. So, gosh darn it, we're, we're in short sleeves. We're letting the sun beat on us a bit. Um, but you just zip these things down tight. I honestly don't even think you need the zip ties sometimes because these things are on so tight. But, you know, if an animal hits one of these and an offset pops free, it would short out. So it's just kind of nice to zip them on. That way they don't pop free. These things, you can put, um, you know, regular tin wire on them. You can put this Intelli rope through them. Um, you know, they've really got a lot of different, you know, methods. I personally like um, the uh, Intelli rope um, that you can get at Premier. I find it to be a good product, you know, um, said to last almost 20, 25 years. They make even better than this, but for the cost and what I go through, this is this has been great. Um, I've been on this farm since 2005 when I bought it. I've still got the same Intelli rope up um, way back then. So absolutely fantastic, folks. As you can see, I'm just kind of threading it through. I'm just making kind of a zigzag pattern so I can just use one strand. And uh, I get I start at the top there with the loop and um, a little splicer to make the loop tie together. And when I get to the end, I'll do the same thing. And that bottom little splicer is what I'm going to use to connect it to a switch. And the switch I'm going to connect to the fence. And that way, when you throw the switch, the gate will go down, but the fence will stay hot, um, just allowing you a little bit more mobility. Now, again, <clears throat> if you're going in here to feed the pigs and they see the pail coming and they want to bum rush you, don't turn the fence off. Um, open it up with the fence hot, and that way when they push into you a bit, you can get out of the way, <clears throat> let them hit bump the fence a couple times. They learn real quick not to come at you, which is really great. I personally find that to be a big advantage uh, when doing this. So all I'm going to do is uh, put the, put the uh, splicer on here. Um, you know, it's just basically two nuts, and it clamps down. I cut off the extra Intelli rope, and uh, this gate is pretty much wired up. I just got to um, put the, um, the main leads from the switch in and put the switch in and then to the fence. Simple as that, folks. I recommend uh, test fitting it. Um, if you like that gate handle lock there, that's one of the best um, gate locks. Um, I got a video on that too if you surf through the, the playlist. Um, but that's a fantastic lock. It works absolutely great. Allows the gate to go up and down in case there's you know winter change. So here I am, I've got, um, I got basically a, uh, another tie. It's got two round ends on it, wire. Buy these things at Flea Farm. Got some extra wire, make it yourself, doesn't really matter. Um, but I'm gonna attach it to the inside of the fence where it's hot. I'm gonna run it behind the gate. I'm gonna come up this post and I'm gonna tie it right into um, a switch. I like these switches. Um, they're kind of my favorite switches. They're uh, like a knife switch, nice big yellow handle. Um, you can buy these at a couple different places. Um, you know, again, you know, 
shop where you like, folks. Buy, buy what you like. I, I like big switches that I know when they're in their down position. I don't like buying the knife switches that have black handles because I can't see them from a distance. This way I can see them when I'm driving by and be like, hey, kids, you haven't turned the, light, the knife switch up, you know? That way it works great. So right now I've got the hot going into the top of, this, of the knife switch. And then coming out of the bottom of the knife switch, I'm going to um, run to the gate. So again, when you close this night switch, the gate will become as hot as the rest of the fence, and our little swine will not like it, um, which is just fine with me. I actually plan to put out a video on this uh, new uh, pig pen, um, but uh, because of weather, I haven't moved the feeder pigs into it yet. So maybe I'll do that this week if the weather gets better. And then uh, once I get the pigs in it, I'll finish shooting the video. And I'll show you what we did with the pigs on the homestead here, uh, getting moved to a, a new location. Um, a lot of times uh, with feeder pigs, um, as they get bigger, they really get kind of, you know, rooty. They uh, start ripping up the dirt and making a mess and uh, making wallers all over the place, which is fine. They're comfortable that way. I get that. Um, but I'm not really sure I always like that. It makes a real mess when I want to do the butchering on the farm. Um, and certainly uh, they eventually get out of my fencing. And I am tired of the feeder pigs getting out, because when they do, they trample gardens, they eat things, and uh, probably worse than that, they're really hard to get back in, unless you've got the right boards and gates to, to keep them in place. So sometimes that's just a real pain for me. So here I am, um, I'm just attaching it here to the uh, gate, and again, it just screws right onto that um, little splicer. And uh, just like that, that sucker is wired up. Again, I got a kind of a 6-inch level, um, about a 12-inch level, and I think almost closer to 20. They won't, they won't climb on this gate. I got the latch on it that I like um, that allow it to go up and down in the frost. I got the knife switch on it here, which I can throw up. And when you pull it down, it's off. Throw it up. It's hot. And this gate will be protected. There won't be an animal rooting on it or hurting it. Thanks for watching, folks. This is how we make you know our gates really last. Um, we wire them up and it uh, works really well with these uh, Gallagher 5 inch offsets in the universal style. You can buy them, at least I buy them at Valley Vet. Um, no, no plug there, but, but either way, it works great. I hope you enjoy your day.